everyone. I'm Linda Lofthouse and I'm a dowser and a house healer. I've been dowsing for about 10 years now. I've used dowsing in a general way over the years uh, for decision making and checking a multitude of questions with day-to-day -day life. And more recently, the last couple of years, I've been using dowsing for house healing to clear the energy in people's houses and um, leaving the house a much healthier and nicer place to be. So in this video, I'm going to tell you a little bit about dowsing, dowsing with a pendulum and show you how to do it. You may be more familiar with dowsing from water divining because years ago, that was the main purpose that people used to douse. Um, but nowadays, there are a multitude of reasons, and um, in particular, in my case, I use dowsing for house healing to check the earth energies and also the energies in the house itself. So, to start dowsing, you need something to douse with. So, today, we're going to use a pendulum, which looks like this. Um, this is just an amethyst pendulum on a chain. There are many different kinds of pendulums that you can buy, brass ones, wooden ones, uh, all different crystals. It's personal preference, what you prefer to use. It doesn't even have to be um, a purposely bought pendulum. You could use a necklace like this. You could use anything that is a weight on a chain or on a piece of string. So you can adapt if you want to have a go and uh, not particularly buy a pendulum to start with. There are other tools as well. There's something called a bobber, which is like a wire on a handle. Um, I really like using a bobber because you get instant answers. It moves so quickly. You can tell if I was asking to give me a yes and give me a no. I get instant results. Um, this is a great tool but we're not going to use it today. That will be in another video. Um, other tools you could use are dowsing rods. Um, again, I would ask for a yes and the dowsing rods would cross and I would ask for a no and they would swing outwards. Um, dowsing rods I tend to use outdoors if I'm dowsing earth energy. Um, you can use it indoors as well, but I prefer to use my pendulum um, for that purpose. So they're the tools. Uh, the thing to bear in mind is that none of these tools have got any magical power. So it's not the pendulum, it's not the rods, it's not the bobber that's coming up with the answer. The answer is coming from your inner knowing, your higher self, your intuition, whatever you want to call it. But this is just a tool to access that information and it will give you a yes or a no answer. Um, so that's quite important. Um, the first thing you need to do when you're dowsing is clear your head of any other thoughts, um, anything that's been going on in your life that day, and get yourself in what is known as a dowsing state. Um, so that would be extremely calm, maybe having a short meditation first if you're familiar with meditating and um, just emptying your head of what, what's been happening so that all you're focusing on is your dowsing. It's also important that you don't have a vested interest in the outcome. So it's no good asking a question where you want the answer to be yes or you want it to be no because without realising it, you'll be sending the pendulum in that direction. You need to be completely neutral and ask the question with a curiosity, as if you're curious to find what the answer could be. So you have to start with establishing what a yes or no answer is for you. In my case, if I ask for a yes, the pendulum will move up and down. If I ask for a no, it will move side to side. That isn't the case for everyone. 
Some people will get, and I'm swinging it now, but some people will get anti-clockwise and clockwise. So um, see what you get. Once you've practiced for quite a while, maybe, you know, half an hour a day for a week or two, the pendulum will move on its own. You just have to make that connection by looking at it, asking it to give you a yes and seeing what happens. And eventually it will start to move. So keep it on quite a short chain and then it's got less work to do. If you're doing it like this, it's got more work to do and it will take longer to move. So hold it like this, ask for a yes and see what results you get. It just takes a little bit of practice, but it will move in the end. Um, if it's not moving at all to start with, kind of tell it, this is a yes. Do, do what you want your yes to be, whether it's anti-clockwise or up or down. This is a no. Just kind of tell it once or twice and then hold it still and see what results you get. So actually, if I'm doing some clearing of energy, then I would get an anti-clockwise um, and clockwise to clear it. But that's a different situation. At the moment, we're just doing yes and no answers. So um, once you've got going with it, you need to ask some test questions. Uh, to check that the pendulum is responding for you. So you could ask something like, um, I have a dog. I don't have a dog, so I'm going to get a no. I'd very much like a little dog, but I haven't got one, so I'm getting a no. I could say I live in North Yorkshire, and I do live in North Yorkshire, so I'm getting a yes for that. Um, I could say I've got black hair. In other words, any question at all that you know the answer to so that you can test you're getting a yes or a no answer. This is just to verify that your pendulum is working for you. Now, pendulum dowsing is considered to be 80% accurate. So it's quite accurate, but you need to help it as much as you can by having clear questions, a clear head and um, it being unbiased with what the answer is. Um, another response I sometimes get, I sometimes get side to side, diagonal like that. For me, that means the answer is as yet unknown. So I could be asking, um, will I go to Australia next year? Which I really want to do, by the way. Um, and I might get a diagonal answer because there's nothing yet in place to um, enable me to do that. Um, or any kind of question where you don't know the answer. So um, that's what you do to start with. Uh, you could do some blind dousing to test yourself. You could um, ask a question that you know the answer to and write it on pieces of paper, turn the pieces of paper over and shuffle them up and then ask your question to test that you're getting the correct answer. Um, another thing you can do if it's a question that you do have a vested interest in and you really want an answer to it is ask one of your friends to douse for you, another dowser, because they would be impartial. So ask someone else if, if you do. So then what can you use it for? Um, lots of things. You can go around the supermarket checking all the food to make sure that it's good for you or it's not going to upset your digestive system. So again, you would word your question in that way. Um, is this pasta agreeable with my digestive system? Would be a good question. Um, is this chocolate cake going to disagree with my digestive system? In, in other words, you can check so that you know you're getting good and healthy food uh, for your body. Um, you could check with allergies. You could have a list of possible allergic reactions like pollen. Um, let me see, bread, flour, um, all the things that can upset people, milk. And you could check, you know, am I allergic to this item? Uh, until you find something that's suitable for you. Um, you could use it with if you had some kind of health issue and you wanted to check what kind of health practitioner uh, would be the best for you to use. 
So you could go through a list of, do I need acupuncture? Do I need reflexology? Um, Etc. And use it in that way. And you could use it for when you're doing your Christmas shopping. You could write a list of gifts and ask, is this present suitable for my Uncle John? Um, Etc. So that you can get gifts that are going to be um, wanted and appreciated. So one of my favourite uses for dowsing is finding lost objects. And I have a little story to tell you um, about my friend Mary, who came to me one day and she had lost two bracelets, two silver bracelets that she'd worn for many years. Her husband, Billy, had bought them for her and she didn't know where she'd lost them. And she was quite upset because they were a special present from her husband. And Mary and I were having a cup of tea. We were, we were not at her house. She was telling me the story. So this is a good example of remote dowsing working well. Um, so I started with lots of questions. When did you last see them? When did you last wear them? Were you at home? Were you visiting someone? Was you on holiday? Um, any random question to try to find out when she'd last seen them. And I got it down to when she was gardening, the, uh, a few days earlier, when she was gardening. She had them on when she was gardening. So um, I started to douse with, are the bracelets in the garden? And I got a yes. Are the bracelets on the lawn? And I got a no. Are the bracelets amongst the plants? I got a no. And it was quite odd because I was getting, yes, they were in the garden, but they weren't amongst uh, any of the plants, trees, shrubs, etc. So I had to go back to Mary and say, come on, I need a bit more information. What, what else was you doing? And so she said, well, you know, I was tidying the garden up and, and the dog had been out in the garden and, um, excuse my words, he'd had a poop. And so Mary had gone to clear that up. You can guess. Are the bracelets in the dustbin? And I got a yes. And so what had happened, they were, in fact, in the bag of dog poop. What had happened is that Mary had had rubber gloves on while she was clearing up the garden. She'd peeled them off with the bracelets inside and put them in the dustbin without realising, of course. Um, so the dowsing helped to locate them. Mary phoned her husband, Billy, straight away to say, go to the dustbin, go and have a look. And he, he didn't want to, you can guess. He was a bit sceptical and, and didn't really want to go poking around um, looking for them. But he did. And he did actually eat his words. And uh, he was quite um, in disbelief, but pleased that they were there. So that's a, a lovely story. It's on my Facebook page. Uh, with Billy's actual comments under the item, so you can see what he actually said. Um, and it's a lovely story of finding a lost item. Um, so I use that quite a lot. I'm not 100% successful, but I very often find the item. And of course, my biggest use is home healing. If you want to have a look at my home healing website, it's under lindalofthouse.co.uk. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please look out for my next ones and um, I'll see you again. Bye for now.